Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. Tonight at 5 o'clock I'm going to be releasing the regular video that I had planned on releasing for this week, but this video that you're watching right now is on a different topic. I'll talk a little bit at the end of this video about what the topic is of the 5 o'clock video, but for right now I want to talk about a topic that I haven't really talked about much at all uh, here on my channel. I've kind of referenced it, you know, kind of obliquely, but uh, you know, certainly in any degree of detail, it, it just really hasn't come up. That's not because it's not an important topic, it's not because it's not one that I've been thinking about a lot, uh, but there are two really important reasons why I haven't talked about this thing. And what is this thing? Well, it's Ukraine and World War III. You know, people all over YouTube are talking about this, speculating about it. Uh, you know, it's of great interest to a lot of people and my, myself as well. But there are a couple of reasons why I haven't brought it up here on my channel. Uh, and they're, they're very important reasons. The first one, I know that this doesn't hold most people back, especially here on YouTube, uh, but I don't have a lot of uh, expertise in, you know, or any particular insight in whether or not something's going to happen or not happen. I, again, I know that that's not a problem that holds back most people here on YouTube from forming very strong opinions uh, that they will, you know, rapidly defend. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. You know, I'm right in there with you. And these these types of things, I think, uh, oftentimes fall into that category for more people than maybe would like to admit it. You know, for something like, you know, ma massive winter storms or flooding or wildfires or, uh, you know, economic issues, you know, there's a degree of science to that, there's a degree, a degree of math to that. Those things tend to be more uh, predictable. But for war, it's, it's kind of difficult. Now, unfortunately, war is kind of a periodic thing that pops up, you know, throughout human history, you know, hopefully. Someday we can break out of that cycle, but it, it's an ongoing cycle that, you know, it just keeps popping up. But it's really difficult for most people, myself included, uh, to know whether any one uh, circumstance is, uh, is going to explode into that. You know, it's, it's sort of like if you had a neighbor, like, you know, there's some, like, you got some, like, old guy neighbor, and he's always been talking about, like, he wants to get a new car, he hates his car, he wants to get a new car, and he's always threatening every... Every weekend, every Sunday, he's going to go into the car dealership and he's going to get a new car. But, you know, he goes and then he comes back and he's in his same old vehicle. And then the next week he goes out and, you know, the, the tensions rise. You know, is he going to get a new vehicle? And he comes back in the same vehicle. You know, he may even go there and he pulls out his wallet one day and he's really thinking about it. But it doesn't happen. Uh, you know, one of these weekends he may come home and he does have that new car. But it's really hard to know any on any given weekend, like, is this the weekend when it's going to happen. Now, there are certain times when he might be more prone to get a new car than others, or there might be a situation where war is more likely to happen. For, uh, for instance, if he's not even at the car dealership, there's a very low chance that he's going to magically get a new car. Uh, you know, so people will try to read the tea leaves on a situation like Luke, uh, Ukraine. Like, uh, you know, is there materials being brought to the border, you know, from both sides? Uh, you know, are there, are there troops amassing? You know, because you're not going to start a war unless you have the materials and you have, and you have the people. But just because the guy drives to the auto dealership doesn't mean necessarily that he's going to come back with a new car. Um, I don't want to compare getting a new car to starting a war because I think there's, there's a difference in magnitude there. <laughs> and one's potentially positive and the other is always negative, it seems. Um, but it, it, my point here is that it, it's fairly difficult to predict, so I, I don't tend to talk about it because I don't really have anything to offer you guys. I'm right there with you, I'm wondering what's going to happen with it, and that's about all that I can say. The second reason why I haven't talked about it here on my channel is that uh, the situation with Ukraine, uh, at least for people who are not living in that immediate area, um, to some degree, it kind of doesn't matter whether it happens or not. And I don't mean that in a cold, callous kind of way. What I mean is the very fact that it could happen is reason enough for doing whatever you would want to do if it was going to happen, if, if that makes sense. Uh, what it means to me is uh, this is one of those uh, decision-making moments where knowing something doesn't really impact the outcome one way or another. Uh, am I going to stop preparing for, you know, general types of things like the grid going down or, you know, supply shortages or whatever? Am I going to stop preparing for those things if I knew that the situation in Ukraine was just going to fizzle out and not turn into an armed conflict? No, I keep doing what I was doing. If I knew that it was going to turn into an armed conflict and, uh, you know, I had some kind of crystal ball, I knew that was going to happen. Would it cause me to do anything different, uh, differently in my own life? And the answer is no. Now, again, if you lived in that area, uh, you know, maybe if you knew that, 
you might decide, well, I think I'm actually going to move. But for people who aren't living in, in that immediate area, they, don't, they wouldn't need to take a, uh, an action that is that extreme. So for many of us, it really doesn't matter whether or not there's a war or not in terms of our personal plans. And again, I don't say that from a position of uh, uh, callousness. You know, I, I certainly hope that uh, you know, people are able to resolve things uh, in a peaceful way, because if they're not, then a lot of people who are alive today, you know, a year from now, are not going to be alive. So I certainly hope that they're able to resolve it in a, a way that doesn't involve bloodshed and killing. But in terms of my own personal uh, decision making, it really doesn't matter. So with so many decisions in the world, in terms of, uh, you know, do I worry about this? Do I worry about that? I really like the types of decisions where uh, it doesn't really uh, it doesn't really matter to me. Another example to that, of that recently uh, has been COVID. Uh, with the Biden administration all too little, all too late, offering these uh, all too ineffective uh, COVID tests to people. And my mother was saying, oh, you know, you should, uh, you should get one of those. So if you got it, you know whether you had it. Um, and that again falls into one of those categories where it doesn't really matter. It wouldn't change any of my decision making. Uh, if, I got a, if I suddenly got a cold, I, you know, we haven't gotten colds or flus or sniffles or anything since we started taking precautions here at our place over the past uh, three years. Um, but if I suddenly got a cold and I wasn't sure whether it was COVID, knowing whether it was COVID really wouldn't change my actions going into the future. Now you might say, well, if you knew you had COVID, you would know that you were immune to it until it mutates and you can get it again. And getting COVID doesn't mean that you're immune to colds or flus or any of the other things going around. So in terms of my PPE and my, uh, my um, hygiene protocols that I've been following when I go out that have been keeping anyone from getting sick, I wouldn't drop any of those anyway. So the, all these types of decisions fall into that category where, uh, you know, thankfully you don't really have to know that bit of information in order to make your decision because your decision is gonna be the same either way. If Ukraine blows up into an armed conflict, I would want to have been prepping and preparing, getting food, materials into the house to be ready for it. If it doesn't, I still want to do those things for all the other things that could happen. Same with COVID, you know, if I get it, I know that I'm immune to that one version of it, it doesn't really matter to me because there's all these other things and I, I would still keep up the safety protocols anyway because it's really great not to get sick, it's really great not to run out of food if there are sh supply shortages and everything. So I always appreciate when I find these sorts of situations where it might be uh, gratifying to know, it might satisfy your curiosity to know about something, but in terms of your decision making, it really doesn't matter. One of those things that, uh, and this ties into the video that I'm gonna be releasing at five o'clock tonight, uh, one of those things that it doesn't really matter one way or the other is access to food. And the video tonight is about how to get access to food, uh, fresh food, fresh uh, vegetables, if the grocery stores ever go down. If uh, you, know, you live in an area like I do, I live in New England and we can't grow food in the winters, uh, you know, unless you have like an indoor uh, garden. And then we are gonna be talking about uh, totally indoor greenhouses for growing, you know, coming up on this channel in the near future. Uh, but you know, there are several uh, months of the year, unless you have that, you know, you're pretty much relying if you're gonna get fresh fruits and vegetables from the grocery store, but you're not actually. There are ways, even if you don't have a, a cool greenhouse kind of environment, that you can do a growing of fresh greens. And we're gonna talk about that in the video tonight at five o'clock. That's it, thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.